So the second carrier transport mechanism is called diffusion. So unlike drift, which well is really something that we have seen it before because well we know that if you have any piece of conductor or semiconductor if you apply voltage across it there's going to be some current and well maybe we don't know what's the exact amount of current for a conductor it's v is equal to ri and for semiconductor we just realized that it's a weird relationship um, with diffusion it's something that we haven't seen before because uh, believe it or not the diffusion current exists even without applying a voltage across a piece of silicon, right? So if you have a silicon crystal and uh, you just sit it, you just put it on the table by itself, you might still have some current in there, right? Uh, even without actually applying a voltage across it. So how does it happen? Well, it really, it's not that weird. It's not that strange of a mechanism. It's very similar to what happens if you actually um, basically drop a, a droplet of ink into water, right? So we know that the particles, the ink particles, are going to move from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration. So the moment you, that you drop this ink, uh, there's going to be some movement like this, and then there's going to be more, and this movement is not actually happening uh, because of gravity only. So, yeah, gravity is going to have something to do with it. But if you look at these, um, look at the distribution of the ink inside this liquid, you will see that it's going to, it is actually moving in every direction. It's not only moving uh, from top to bottom, right? And if you give it enough time, it's going to actually distribute across the entire liquid and the entire dish that you have there, right? So what does this tell me? It tells me that as long as there's a difference between the concentration of ink in the water uh, from region to region, there is going to be some movement. There's going to be particles of ink that are moving from the high concentration regions to the low concentration regions. We have exact same, we have the exact same kind of a mechanism with electrons inside a silicon crystal. So if you have a piece of silicon that in one section we have a lot more electrons than the other section, or somehow electrons are getting injected into one section of the crystal, and there is going to be a movement of electrons from one, from the section with high concentration to the section with low concentration until there is no difference in terms of the silicon, uh, the electron density in different parts of your silicon crystal, right? So charged particles move from a region of high concentration to a region of a low concentration, and that's the essence of diffusion. Right. So the, sense of the definition of diffusion is movement of charge carriers from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And it's proportional. So you can imagine that it's proportional to the gradient of charge. So if you don't have any kind of gradient in charge, like imagine this situation with the ink example, there is no gradient in uh, the gradient of uh, ink particles. Right everything is distributed evenly so there is no dn over dx if you look if you do if if everything is constant if, if everything is distributed uh, perfectly and perfectly constant in a perfectly equal way then you can imagine that the the, the derivative of distribution is going to be zero right so dn over dx is going to be zero this is similar with electrons and the electron distribution or charge distribution free charge distribu distribution distribution uh, in silicon crystals or in semiconductor materials in general okay so basically no diffusion when there's no difference in concentration in different regions so i can say that the current density or current doesn't matter we're going to use current density from now on so that we basically we we make our analysis independent of the size of the crystal the physical size of the crystal so the current density is going to be proportionate to dn over dx or the basically the gradient of charges okay so similar to the drift mechanism and mobility here we're going to define something called diffusivity so from the previous slide we had jn proportional to dn over dx so if i want to write the equation for jn i'm going to say it's equal to dn over dx times a proportionality constant i'm going to call it dn and we're going to this is basically we're going to call this or 
basically name this diffusivity and since it's dn it's diffusivity of electrons and well we're not done yet because jn which is the current density should be in well, coulombs per centimeter squared this is there's no notion of charge here so i have to multiply this by q right charge of an electron so that's how i get jn if i want the, the actual current i have to multiply this by the cross-section area of my crystal so it's going to be i is going to be equal to a times q times dn dn over dx okay um, so this diffusivity constant is defined as how willing the carriers are to diffuse and for intrinsic silicon we have these numbers dn for electrons is 34 and dp is 12 volt uh, with the unit of centimeter squared per second again uh, confirming that electrons are going to be uh, more diffusive than uh, holes by a factor of approximately three uh, for holes i can write the same kind of expression jp is going to be negative q dp over dp times dp over dx um, you might wonder why this one has a negative and electrons have jn has a positive sign uh, this could be a little bit of a practice for yourself to think about it but just giving you a hint uh, remember the charge carriers are moving from the place that has higher concentration to a place that has lower concentration so this derivative is going to be always dp over dx is going to be always a negative value right and the other thing to remember when you're thinking about this is that for holes when we're moving from left to right the current is also moving from left to right for electrons when we're moving from re left to right the current is actually moving from right to left right so the negative should be added to this jp so that we can get the uh the sign right so that when we add these up or well more accurately speaking when we subtract the two uh terms it is in, indeed it indeed has a constructive kind of a it is uh, indeed a constructive addition uh, meaning that the diffuse uh, diffusion current of elect due to electron is basically added to the diffusion current of holes in terms of its magnitude okay so this is going to be the total current due to diffusion so total current density due to diffusion so while the underlying physics behind drift and diffusion currents are totally different uh, it's interesting to to see that uh, there's a relationship between the diffusivity of a charge carrier and the mobility of a charge carrier uh, which we call the einstein relation so the einstein relation tells us that if i take d uh, the diffusivity of a carrier divided by mu the mobility of that carrier let's say dn over mu n or dp over mu p it's going to be actually equal to this this uh, fraction is going to be equal to kt over q k being the Boltzmann constant uh, we know that it's its value 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 t is the t room temperature or well the temperature uh, that we have in the room and uh, q being the charge of an electron right so basically this ratio d over mu um, is going to be always equal to a constant value uh, for well a certain temperature so at the room temperature for example which is 300 ke uh, kelvin uh, we're going to have kt over q uh, that is approximately equal to 26 millivolts right we're going to use so it, it's also interesting that um, the dimension of this ratio is actually in volts so this is approximately 26 millivolts at room temperature um, it's also called this kt over q in many different places so we're going to see that this this kt over q ratio is going to appear in many many different discussions that we're going to have in electronics uh, and it's going to help us a lot in terms of 
uh, simplifying a lot of our math. So KT over Q sometimes is called thermal energy, thermal energy, and uh, we can always calculate its value uh, basically using the constant values that we have. We know the charge, the, the electron charge value, we know the temperature, we know the Boltzmann constant. If you're interested to know more about this Einstein relation, how, the, how is it actually found, uh, you can look at this textbook reference that I mentioned here. Uh, but it's it's generally the derivation of this, this relation is out, outside of the scope of our course, but we are going to use this relation a lot in this course.